Hello, everybody. This is Elijah Ignatieff of the School of Unconscious Communication, Planetary Guardians, the New Paradigm Toolkit, and the Inflow Matrix, and the Very Secret Plan, all at the same time. I'm your host, and what we have here is session number four with Planetary Guardian Media Team number three. And so why don't we have a check-in for the week? Why don't you uh, maybe share your biggest insight or learning of the week and uh, tell us how you are, and then we'll start with that. Lindsay, would you love to begin? Um, sure. Um, I think like, well, I remember last week, but um, I missed it. But I remember thinking like one with one of the maps when I was looking at it, like it's kind of weird. It was the, the very first one that we did and the values that I had picked for that one. And they were just sort of like really messing with my life. <laughs> they were very much so taking um, taking into effect because I had did I had did one with my mom and then one with Elijah and so I had two different values and it almost felt like um, some of them were like fighting with each other in a certain way um, so I sort of like scratched both of them and tried to like erase and then start from the beginning so I didn't have to deal with the repercussions of all that because it was a little bit intense <laughs> watch out Gentlemen yeah. ladies, it works. That's my weekly update. I'll, I'll go from there. Other than that, I've just moved. Okay, continuing. <laughs> moved to a new place um, and just like really low energy for the past week. Um, basically, okay. Sub average, subpar. Well, you also said you're sickly, so. Yeah, that's a factor as well. Mm. Looks lovely in the background, though. It is. It's a beautiful house. Okay, thank you, Daniil. How are you doing out there? Uh, I'm not doing particularly well. I, for the second time in my life, um, had a close female friend tell me that she couldn't talk to me anymore because her partner was uncomfortable. Oh. Uh, the, the the number of or proportion of insecure people in this world continues to surprise me um, and it, it's strange kind of I, I don't know if I'm being uh, overly uh, kind of rating my own ability to understand situations too highly but I feel like I'm, I'm watching the minds of these two individuals and how they're interacting what they're trying to do what they're actually doing pretty good idea of where it's going to end up which isn't a particularly happy place, and realizing that their efforts are counterproductive. And I can't decide if that's me just being arrogant, because I, I think I know it all, uh, or at least have a good idea of where it's going to go. Um, or it, it really is just that way. Uh, as I've kind of progressed on my development journey, I feel like my understanding of what's going on in the world and the there's going to be layers added to my understanding of what drives people, the, the patterns that they fall into, often those that are counterproductive, uh, has increased quite dramatically. So there's a lot more complexity to life than there used to be. Um, and and I, in a lot of ways, I, I can't decide if that's a good thing. I feel like there, there's a lot of truth to the whole ignorance is bliss. So when I watch someone that I care about, who's very smart and very capable, go around this pattern that is self-destructive, it, it makes me very sad, along with the fact that I've lost a close friend. Um, and just that to tell me, oh, I, I hope this will just be temporary, he'll, he'll become secure. I'm just, going, just, just no way. Because if even if this goes well, right, your relationship is going well, you're not going to want to reestablish contact because that rocks the boat. And if it isn't going well, you're not going to want to reestablish contact because you're afraid of making it worse. So there's just Unless you actually break up with this guy, which I don't think is the right path forward, it's just uh, irritating. Um, anyway, uh, that happened last night, and I am sad because I, I don't have many friends who I feel understand how I think. In fact, I've got one at the stage that's left. There's different people who understand different aspects, but uh, it's rare to find someone that I think really gets how I think. Uh, so losing one out of two is painful. Uh, and I also 
don't think it's going to be helpful for her in the long run either because she's pretty complex and there's not many people who understand her. Mm. Just a quick question. What was your one-on-one -on -one value? The... Love. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Matthew. <sighs> okay. So I'm doing good. And the what I learned this week is a Japanese proverb. It says fall down seven times, get up eight. So that's kind of like my life, except I think I'm like up. What I'm trying to say is um, my life's going really good. I spent the last 10 to 15, let me check, <clears throat> 10 to 12 years learning how to like get back on the horse and deal with my self thoughts in my head, my self. And, um, you know, I've done really good at that, that game of kind of going down that rabbit hole, applying myself fully into like self development. So to me these days, my check-in for this group is like, my life is so many falling downs and getting ups. It's so integrated that I don't really do either of them anymore. It's just a coasting. And if there's bumps, it's so mostly unnoticeable. Um, I like feeling the extremes of life. I'm not afraid to feel terror or bliss either. So I still swing into those places, but that's, Something I wrote down this week that I heard a really good friend say, Japanese proverb is fall down seven times, get up eight. And so that's kind of my motto this week. And I really respect the Asian cultures and the history there. Unless some white guy may have said this, but you know, I'll believe the, the Japanese thing because I want to. <laughs> that's my check-in, Elijah. Okay. Okay, um, just pulling something up. I guess on, on my, uh, if I have a bit of a check-in, at some point I was, I went into super pissed. I couldn't believe the level of anger that I had. And um, it sort of, I don't know about you guys, but when I get that mad, it sort of, it changes my viewpoint on everything. And it has me reassess everything, everybody. And I, I sort of, you know, it, it, like you, Matthew, I've had many ups and downs. And I'm just fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just about to sort of take off, I think, finally, with my own work. And I've been very frustrated over the years, very frustrated, thinking, knowing what I had, but not seeming to get, to get buy-in from my community, no matter what I did. And I think you, I don't know about you guys, but you reach a point where you're, you're assessing people and you're assessing, you know, are they on the team or not? Are they sort of following you or not? Are they, are they like an ally or not? And in Facebook and all these social medias, we can have a perception of having many people in our life, thousands, but in fact, you know, I don't think I've ever had more than five friends, you know, and uh, to have 20 people in your life that you're close with is very, a lot, I think. And right now I probably got about 30 people that I'm, I'm working with specifically in creating creative outputs or training or, or something. And it's, it's rising sort of each week. And I, I recently uh, gave a presentation at a mastermind group. It was the first time explaining my work to a group of scholars first time me attempting to actually explain my work in 25 years to an audience that could understand it. And 
it was the beginning of me teaching. Like this is, I'm not really teaching much here. I'm just giving you the experience of, of something because I think that that's more important than me being a talking head. But at some point I need to share in large volumes what's happened because, you know, I believe I have the operating system for the planet, for the new paradigm. You know, I don't think a lot of people can say that. And at some point you have to really, really make a stand for yourself and your work. Whether anyone's behind you, whether anyone's believing you, you have to believe fully in yourself. I think ahead of anything happening. And if I can sh share this screen with you. Um, where is this? I guess maybe I'll, okay, what? Sorry, I'm just a little slow here. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay, so this to me is the, is the first map. We kind of spoke about it, but I don't think I gave you the actual map. This is, this is the largest container of the inflow matrix. This is the beginning. And this is the first map because it distinguishes the old paradigm from the new paradigm. And if you're in the new paradigm, you can distinguish the old paradigm. But if you're in the old paradigm, you can't distinguish the new paradigm. It's like the pupae and the caterpillar, that the new paradigm is insanity to the old paradigm. The new paradigm is focused on love and the old paradigm is focused on fear. And both paradigms look at the other paradigm as insane because they're so fundamentally different. And I believe that like Matthew and uh, Lindsay and Daniil, you, you're all in the new paradigm, whether you know it or not. You're pioneers, you're representatives of a love-based reality. And you may or may not sort of be known for that with your peers. Um, and what you're doing is the first part of that time cone is you're putting the five communication spaces. That's your entry point into the new paradigm. And it's the beginning of creating boundary language distinctions in your conceptual mind for you to see reality and to design and program it with the values and beliefs and, and other things that you are going to do. Now at the end, you have the seven lifetime goals. And those lifetime goals are what fill the back of that time cone. That is the future that you're moving into. So the front was the five communication spaces. The back are the seven lifetime goals. And then you got the flow wheel right behind it. So the inflow matrix is starting to put these filters into this conceptual time cone that then you are programming into it all types of maps. And believe me, I've got a whole bunch of maps for you, depending upon how, if you want to go past. This is the end of module one. So you as a team are going to have to decide whether you want to proceed to module two. And that's going to be up to each of you. Maybe one of you wants to, maybe two, maybe three. It depends on whether you want to go forward. So I'm going to give you another map here to take a look at. Uh, where is... Okay, can everybody see that? It's the one year, 13 cycles, four spaces, pulse chart. And so what we're looking at in the time translator is we have nine time cycles and the, sec the, the one on the outside is a lifetime cycle and the next one in is a year cycle. So it's the second biggest cycle that we have. And right here, the, it's divided into 13 cycles. You could call them 13 moons, but basically it's 13 cycles of 28 days. 13 times 28 equals 364, and there's one day out of time. Now, who here has studied a Jose Arguez uh, Mayan calendar system at all? Just a little bit, Matthew, Lindsay, anything? Okay, so these words you see, magnetic, lunar, electric, self-existing, rhythmic, resonant, galactic, solar, spectral, 
planetary, crystal, and cosmic, an overtone in the middle. This comes from his 13 moon calendar. And this is kind of like a, a layering on of his worldview connecting into another worldview, which has the four spaces. Now, if we look at the here, we have the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the community space, and the group space. And this goes to your first map that you made. And what I'm putting forward is that in a 28-day cycle, basically four weeks, one of the weeks is the personal space, one of the weeks is the one-on-one -on -one space, one of the weeks is the community space, and one of the weeks is the group space. Now what that does is it's gonna to start to synchronize all the people and teams in this pulse where personal space is your time. That week you get to do by yourself, on your own, whatever manner, but that the community space, now you're looking to connect with your community and all the people in the community are coming together at the same time because if we all start to use this pulse map together, we can start to come together in community. And as you probably know, sometimes it's very hard to synchronize people to get them in the same room over and over again. With this methodology, the aim is that we can. The group space is kind of like when you meet your team and do a lot of your work. You might have three or four meetings in one week with a team and then maybe not see each other for the rest of the month because you're doing the actual work that you said you're gonna do and that you're reporting on. The one-on-one -on -one space is spending time with just one person or your loved one or some partner, depending. And, and you don't have to have just that space. You can have community space in your personal space. You can have personal space in your community space. But if you look at scheduling your week, you can start to look at, you know, you might go group space and that's all the time you're spending at work, Daniel. And Matthew, you may have one-on-one -on -one spaces with all the people that you're coaching. And Lindsay might have personal space, you know, all the time that you want your own personal space alone. So you can start to look at your week and not just look at the content of what you're doing, but look at each of these things as spaces that you're, you're starting to see, like, how much time do I spend in the community space? How much time do I spend one-on-one? -on -one? How much time do I spend personal? And how much time do I spend in the group space? So it's bringing that space thing into scheduling your time and looking to balance it out to find out what is your ideal. Some people need a lot of personal space. Some people need tons of group space. But some people may be way out of balance and they have like no community space and only personal space and they're feeling isolated and alone and they need community space. So each one of these months has the cycles and now I'm going to stop and I want to go back to you guys and tell me what you just think of what I just said. Okay. I think it's deep, heavy. It's very like I Ching. I think of like these, you know, huge uh, calendars and, and how it ties into the psyche. So that's what it, the engines in, it runs in me. Um, I don't know what else to say. I see it as like big, good, cool concept stuff. I can't, it's nothing's landed personally. I'm like, where does the supply in my day to day? But I don't really need that. I, I feel it bigger and get it. But if you want to get both spec sides of the spectrum of enrollment into what you've manifested or created, then also do both sides. That's kind of my thoughts of it all. Okay. Any suggestions of how? I mean, in a sense of... Uh, you can share personal stories too. Like I, Elijah, have been using this and look. I wake up and I look at this and it means this and, and I now take these actions and yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I can do that. I mean, one thing is I have a, uh, I have a, like a weekly s schedule kind of thing, right? Hmm. Where that's my go to of what's happening in the week. And that's kind of changed my life in a sense. Can we see that again? What the fuck? <laughs> that's hilarious. So it's, I've got everything mapped out, obviously, and I've got the seven step pulse model across. Do I have I showed you that one yet? And the seven step pulse model in a day. 
So it's, 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 and then you, what you have is you have cards. That's my personal space. You use it with blue and this is green. You can get those index card packs where you have four different colors. You have red, green, yellow, and blue. And so if I'm just doing personal space research or something, that's blue. Just can't see the color that well. Community space is green. Yellow is one on one space and red is the group space. So I have, you know, specific one on ones I'm filming with people. I have team trainings I'm doing with people. I have, you know, my own personal, if I'm doing videos, it's just me. And uh, so that's one way. P Planetary Guardians one team, as soon as they heard about the spaces, they started scheduling their time together. Now they, they live together and work together. So they started looking at their week and they scheduled their time. You know, when do they have the group time? When do they have their one-on-one? -on -one? When they have, per and it revolutionized their life, they said. That was like the first thing they did together. And they, they had some huge shifts in how they connected with one another. So that, that, I mean, and I didn't say to do that. They did that on their own. How about you, Daniil? Any feedback or thoughts? Uh, I was interested by Matthew's response because uh, my, my takeaway was from the you know brief uh, time of thinking about it is much simpler. Uh, I think being conscious about how you're spending your time and potentially how you're scheduling that time will be helpful to, to maintain balance. Um, at the same time, I was already aware that my community time is very low, mainly because I, I don't feel a connection with the the people around me primarily um, in New York. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I can't find communities to connect with if I, if I dig for them. Uh, group one-to-one -one and personal vary in this current situation. Everything except personal is, is pretty limited. But I think uh, most people are in that situation at this point. But I, I just a, a wider thought, I, I do feel like there is so much structure in all of these things, Elijah. I do wonder if, do you, do you get to a point where you can discard a lot of the structure because you've just internally kind of integrated the, the various thought processes? Because uh, at the moment, it, it just feels like too much structure. There's like all of these different ways of looking at things. Um, and also just kind of there are always different ways to do things there are you know, there are ways that work for you and ways that you're aware of but many people have different paths to get to pretty similar points uh, and this is something that I've seen from talking with deeply religious people through atheists the, the, the conclusions that they come to if they are um, kind of deeply thoughtful people all seem to be very similar so it feels like to me there's lots of paths the same place um okay my answer would be i mean i i i think i have gone a little overboard with the structure um 25 years 10 hours a day you know i can pretty much say i you know if you think this is a lot you know this this is nothing right to me i to me i'm, I'm taking the gold of what i've come up with and giving it to you i mean the reason we're meeting in this in this way is to give you this structure so I mean, it's, it's obviously, you know, it's going to be a lot of structure because that's basically what it is. And you're right. It's like, if you're, if you're learning the structure of music at some point, you're just playing jazz and you don't have to know anything other than what you're playing. And I find with something like communication, you may find again, that once you fill these in, you, you may never go back to it again. You may never look at your long-term goals. You may not look at those values, but they will have an effect. And depending upon how, much time and effort you put into, let's say, detailing it. It's like the mind needs goals. You're, pro you're reprogramming your mind. And there are tons of other systems. There's tons of other worldviews. There's, there's tons and tons and tons and tons. What I'm trying to do is create a reference point for you guys and for other people to share because we have so many other sort of systems and worldviews and, and belief systems what we're lacking is a unit of reference point to go forward into the future. And so 
you know, this may or may not be your cup of tea in terms of how you want to structure it. Uh, if you have something better, I'd love to hear. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure you've got tons of your own models and systems. And the idea of the inflow matrix is to integrate the best practices. That it's, it's less about better than just. Um, I, I like to get to the point where I, I have deeply understood whatever it is that I'm learning, and I can discard the framework. It, it, it's kind of like the best analogy to me is driving. When when you first start to drive. It takes such conscious effort to do it, but over time you get to the state of unconscious competence and you can do it auto automatically and then you can do a whole load of other things while you're driving. Um, so I, I was just wondering if, if that was something that you had seen in yourself, in people that you've been working with for a while. Uh, so it, it wasn't a criticism of the structure. It was just at some point you discard it or do you feel that actually you need to maintain it and continue applying it well, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly sort of getting new maps. Um, I mean, again, I sort of went on the overboard in terms of this and I, I'm just fascinated by it. So I'm, I'm constantly sort of playing with different ways of organizing information. Um, but definitely, you know, they will work unconsciously. They will, you know, you don't have to sit there and go, here's my, I mean, I would memorize the maps. I think that's a good idea to do. But again, if you put them in a drawer and never look at them again, I think they will be acting on you. So it's, it's up to each of you how much you're going to utilize it. And again, how much some people, they don't like structuring anything. And, and that's fine. Um, I think in the work that you're doing, obviously operations for a healthcare company, that you're going to have certain systems and structures that you're trying to get people to use that are useful, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, the main goal is they're useful. I mean, most people that I've met don't have a conscious value system. They don't have a way of linking this conscious value system to their business. And they don't have, like they haven't really form formatted their mind in any way at all. So that's very different from you who's, who's done a lot of self-development and is actually working in, in the business using stuff like that, right? Got it. How about you, Lindsay? Um, I would say like in general, the I'll add a little bit to that. I can definitely attest to making the maps and then never seeing them again and then having them take effect. It is like a really weird thing um, that typically happens for whatever reason. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's sort of like it reaches into some weird part of your unconscious and whether you're like really aware of it or not, it's sort of like your life moves in those directions. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's better to switch the values because you realize that the values that you put in place aren't actually the ones that you wanted to be able to have in that place, even though you maybe thought that you did. Um, in the experience that I've had in the years of me kind of doing this, um, and then the, in regards to the map that you um, just showed us, I think that the um, in my personal life, I had a lot of like personal space and one-on-one -on -one space, but not a lot of like community or group space. Um, maybe that's because of COVID, but I think that those are also two things. Um, you have a hard time in all of the spaces, <laughs> except <laughs> majorly personal space. Um, so, uh, yeah, I like that you were able to highlight the difference of like how it might like show up in people's lives of like what the dynamic might like actually be. Like if you have a lot of group space or a lot of personal space but not a lot of one-on-one -on -one space. Like, I feel like that would look like you're working with a lot of people, you're doing a lot of work by yourself or something, but you're never actually connecting with any of the individuals. Or if you've got lots of community space and lots of like, I don't know, community space and group space, but not a lot of personal and one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like it would be kind of similar. And you'd, I don't know, I, I like, like being able to think about the different dynamics of how the, um, the balance of what each of those spaces would be like in your life and whether one is high or whether one's low and how they would format. Um, that's my thoughts. Uh, see, w one of the powers of this is as more people use the maps, there's, there's going to be, I think, more connection between those people. And so this particular map that I just shared with you is, is new. I mean, I've had it on my wall and I've used it, but now I have it and I have the ability to share with people. And all the maps sort of gain more value as you share them with your network, because then they, they become a reference point to start to self-organize all the people that are using the maps. 
in this particular one, right, it's, it's a whole year and looking to create this 13 step pulse, like boom, the community comes together, boom. Like I was thinking for you, Matthew, you know, because you're, you're working with dynamic teams, you're working with the whole community, um, you're doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching and you need your time for yourself. But like, if you started to look at this pulse model, gave it to your full network and said, okay, here's our community week. This is where we're coming together as a community. Here's our team week. And here's where we're coming together as a team. Because I find like with teams, you can meet weekly, depending it. But sometimes you need a lot of time in between for that team to actually go out and do the work or whatever that you got to do. So there's going to be some teams that you meet just once a week. I mean, once a month. But if you schedule them during that week, and let's say you had four teams that you got together just during that group time, then they've got three weeks to come around, do their work, and then you come back. And it's, again, every 28 days, you're coming back to the same sort of structure. And you're seeing, okay, well, how did you do? What happened? You know, I mean, if you have it sort of too quick, the team doesn't have the amount of time. Like what we're doing here, like we're doing training once a week. And in that situation, I think it's very important because if this was once a month, you wouldn't get enough of the, the maps to really get going. I think it would take like four or five months rather than, you know, a very concentrated first two months or first month. And then it's kind of like, okay, go use the maps, go do what you want to do. You know, if you guys want some more, fine, but there's enough here to keep you going for quite a while, I think. So we're coming to the end of the 40 minutes. Um, we'll just end there and I'll uh, bring you back in and give you uh, the next map, okay?